Hey friends, today I want to take you through my design tools and hardware that I use within my design process as a designer. I don't use all of these every day, but a lot of them I do have specific use cases for, and I'm going to show you a little bit about what I use and how I use it. I'm going to start with hardware first, and then I'll move on to some of the software I use ending with a few extra tools and little widgets that I recommend that really help me speed up my workflow. So hardware first, my computer of choice is the 15 inch MacBook. This is the 2017 model with the touch bar, which I haven't found very useful to be honest. I haven't really found a place for using the touch bar in my workflow, but maybe that's because the most of the time when I use this, I'm connected to a external display. So I have a wireless keyboard in front of me, so I'm not really using the keyboard on this laptop very actively. Now, a lot of you might ask why Mac? And some of you might prefer Windows machines. Good for you. I know that a lot of design tools and software is moving more towards the cloud, so now you don't have to be tied to a Mac anymore as much as you used to be. The reason I use Mac is simply because it's what I've used for the longest time. I've been on Mac for over 10 years. I've managed to figure out my entire workflow and my entire process on it so I can work really quickly. It does everything I need it to do. I like the specs, so honestly, I use it because I like it and it fits best for my workflow. Now my MacBook is obviously what I do all of my heavy duty design work in. I spend at least hours a day on this computer and am often doing all of my vector and design work on this machine. The next tool I use sometimes in my design process is my iPad Pro and Apple Pencil. This is the 11 inch 2017, I believe, iPad Pro. It is not the latest edition, but I haven't really found a need to upgrade yet because this iPad Pro does everything I need it to do pretty well. I don't really do any heavy duty design work on my iPad. Sometimes I might do some sketches, but often I find myself moving more towards a whiteboard or A3 paper if I'm trying to brainstorm or sketch something out. So I mostly use my iPad Pro actually for YouTube, creating thumbnails or little graphics for within my videos. In the past, I used it for hand lettering, which was super useful. And like I said, a little bit of UX flow work. Whenever I need to make a website, Webflow is my number one tool of choice. What I love about it is that for the first time, I feel like I don't need to be a front end developer or a coder to bring my designs to life on my own. Webflow gives me the complete freedom and flexibility to bring my own designs into the tool and bring them to life. I use Webflow for both my personal site and also my podcast website. And for both of those sites, I use Webflow's inbuilt CMS, which is super useful. I can easily add new episodes or new blog posts and really customize them to my own liking. And my number one design tool of choice is Figma. I switched to Figma in early 2018, and honestly, I probably spend the majority of my day when I'm at my computer in Figma. Figma is extremely performant. I can zoom in and out, scroll around my canvas, and it handles it perfectly. The other cool thing about Figma is that it's based in the cloud, it's a collaborative tool, so whether you're on Mac or Windows, it's free for you to use, and you can also use it with your colleagues and be in the same design file at the same time, which for me has just completely changed how I work with my colleagues. I use Figma for wireframing, creating user flows, user journeys, user stories, and of course doing actual vector screen design and high fidelity design. All of that is done in Figma. I also use Figma's inbuilt prototyping feature to make prototypes. And Figma's prototyping features are pretty good. You can do more than just basic screen transitions. You can now make things sticky and create scroll effects. And once I've created a prototype, I load it onto a phone and then use that for user testing. Another tool I use is Procreate, and this is what I use on my iPad Pro if I'm doing sketching, brainstorming, or creating things like thumbnails or graphics for my YouTube videos. I also sometimes use Concepts, which is another app on the iPad Pro. And what I like about this app is that it has an infinite canvas. So this is if I'm really doing a big brainstorm or creating a big journey map and want kind of this infinite room to think and brainstorm and explore. Any design documentation I do is mostly done in Google Slides. And the reason I use Google Slides is because it's shared with my whole company. Anyone can kind of do a global search and they'll find anything related to my design project. A few different presentations I create in Google Slides are design documents, research synthesis, 
design handoff documents. So anything kind of relating to documentation about the project that I'm working on. All right, and throwing in an analog tool because of course not everything is done using digital technology. I often visit Marvel Apps Sketchpad resource, which has many different templates for you to actually download, print out, and you can use these device frames for sketching and brainstorming. I'll often download an Android one, print it out on A3 paper, and then with a Sharpie, give myself you know, five minutes or something and see what I can come up with in those five minutes as part of an exploration process. A neat little tool that I use for managing my colors is called SIP. SIP is about 12 US dollars and it lets you color pick anything from on your screen. You can also then create color palettes and manage and organize your colors. So I have a few different color palettes for different projects and things that I work on. And what kind of designer would I be if I didn't talk about fonts? Google Fonts is my go-to resource of choice. They have a huge library. I think it's almost up to a thousand different font families that you can choose from. And this is my go-to resource of choice when I'm looking for a new font. It's really easy to download something. Google takes care of all of the licensing. So for me, I like to just browse, see something that I like, download it, and I can use it straight away in my project. Another font resource that I like to use is the Designers Foundry. And this is a place I go to if I'm looking for something a bit more specific, custom, or decorative. What I love about this site is it's all independent artists that create original typefaces, and there's so many cool, quirky, different fonts on there that if I'm looking for something that's a little bit different, I'm bound to find something interesting there. All right, and those are the things that I use in my design toolkit. I'd love to hear what you use. I'm always looking for new tools and workflows and tips and things to bring into my process. So if I didn't mention something that you use quite often, then please do let me know by leaving a comment. Thanks for watching friend. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.